Okay, in this video, I'm going to do my second example of finding arc length when, you, when you're when you given parametric curves. So we discussed the formula in the other video, so maybe let's go ahead and jump onto it here. So I'm going to find the length given by um, the parametric curves x equals e to the t plus e to the negative t, y is 5 minus 2t, and t is going to be on the interval 0 to 3. So again, the first thing, uh, we've got to figure out the derivative of x with respect to t. We have to figure out the derivative of y with respect to t. Um, so notice the derivative of x with respect to t will simply get e to the t minus e to the negative t. The derivative of y with respect to t will simply get negative 2. And again, as discussed in the other video, you have to make sure that the curve is transversed exactly once. So if we can show that the derivative of x with respect to t is um, strictly positive, except for at a finite number of points, or um, strictly negative except for a finite number of points, well then the curve is either basically moving strictly to the left or strictly to the right. So that's what I'm going to try to justify here. So. Um, and again, the idea is you don't want it moving left and then moving back to the right, and you know maybe it traces itself out a few times, and then the value of the integral will actually be a multiple, or, or assuming it's transversed um, a multiple number of times, it's basically going to be larger than what it should be, so we have to be careful about that. So I'm going to use the first derivative test, and remember to figure out where a function is increasing or decreasing, you just find the critical numbers of that function. So I have to find the critical numbers of e to the t minus e to the negative t, and I can write that as e to the t minus 1 over e to the t. If I multiply top and bottom by e to the t, I'll get e to the 2t minus 1 over e to the t. Okay, so again, this is dx dt. So to find the critical numbers, remember the critical numbers are points in the domain of the original function where the derivative is either undefined, which means we would have to divide by 0, but e to anything is never 0, so there's no point that's going to make the derivative undefined. Or another place to, where you get a critical number is where the derivative is equal to 0. So that means e to the 2t minus 1 would have to equal 0. Or if we add 1 to both sides, that'll simply tell us that e to the t has to equal 1. Um, excuse me, e to the 2t has to equal 1. But we know e to the 0 is what equals 1. So that tells us that 2t would have to equal 0. And that tells us that t equals 0, which happens to be an endpoint of the interval. So for t values greater than 0, the derivative either has to be strictly positive or strictly negative. In either case, the, the curve that's being traced out is either moving strictly to the left or strictly to the right. So it will be transversed exactly once. OK, so again, um, so if you really didn't think about that, you would get the problem correct here, I think. but. Uh, you'd be missing out on part of it. It would be easy to get it wrong in a different problem. So again, it says we take the derivative of x with respect to t, which is e to the t minus e to the negative t, and we have to square it. And we add on to that the derivative of y with respect to t squared. OK, so now it's just an integration problem. OK, so now we have to evaluate. Um, this integral. And the first thing I'm going to do is multiply out the e to the t minus e to the um, e to the t minus e to the negative t squared. I'm going to go ahead and FOIL, multiply that stuff out. Okay, so e to the t times e to the t is going to be e to the 2t. e to the t times negative e to the negative t is going to be negative e to the 0. That's what we're going to get on the inside. Then on the outside, we'll get a positive e to the negative 2t. So underneath my radical, I'm going to have e to the 2t. Well, e to the 0, again, is 1. So we have minus 1 minus 1, or minus 2, plus e to the negative 2t. And then we have to uh, tack on our negative 2 squared, which is going to give us positive 4. And again, we're integrating all that with respect to t. Okay, so this looks kind of like a nasty little integral. Um, you might think, you know, what on earth to do here? And it just seems like this is a common little trick for these arc length problems. So the first thing I'm going to do is combine negative 2 and positive 4. Well, that's going to give you e to the 2t plus 2 plus e to the negative 
2t. And again, um, you know, maybe you think about u substitutions or something else here. The trick here is to simply factor this. Um, notice that we can actually write e to the 2t plus 2 plus e to the negative 2t as e to the t um, plus e to the negative t times e to the t plus e to the negative t. Because again, if we FOIL it out, we'll get our e to the 2t. We'll get our plus 1, plus 1 on the middle, which will give us plus 2. And then we'll get our plus e to the negative 2t. Well, that's the same thing now as e to the t plus e to the negative t quantity squared dt. And if you take the square root of a quantity squared, we just get what's underneath the square root. Okay, so that's the trick to get rid of the square root in this problem, is to write it as something squared. So, you know, obviously a nice problem in the sense that we're able to do that. But, you know, on a test or a quiz or a homework problem, they set them up to work out. So, you know, it's not that bizarre. Okay, so now if we simply integrate e to the t, we get e to the t. You can do a u substitution. If you integrate e to the negative t, we would get um, negative e to the negative t. We would have to evaluate that from 0 to 3. Okay, so upper limit e cubed minus e to the negative third power um, minus our lower limit. We would get e to the 0 minus e to the negative 0, which is e to the 0. So we're going to get 1 minus 1, and that will cancel out. And our final answer will be e cubed minus 1 over e to the third power. That'll be our arc length in this problem. Again, a positive number for sure. So you can plug that into a calculator if you want to see a decimal representation of it. But again, nothing crazy, just knowing a formula. Um, the integrals can be a little tricky, but look for these two common tricks. As in the first one, we factored and did a u-sub. In the second one, we were just clever about factoring. It seems like a lot of times that's what happens. So certainly not always. All right, I hope these two examples help you out. If you have any questions or comments, as always, feel free to post them. Um, and hopefully me or someone else can help you out out there.